I think we're good to go. I've just had a look. Hello to everyone who's joining us on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Twitter, and of course on Livestorm. Uh, as Pierre said, today's webinar is all about automated IoT testing and is it a game changer for product quality? And we're going to be looking at our very own software accelerator, Pluma. Um, I'm really excited about this one. I think we're going to learn a lot. So just a few um, kind of housekeeping things to say. If you are watching us on any of our socials, hello. Um, you can answer and ask questions um, in the comments and I'll be able to see them. And at the very end of the webinar, we'll be doing a live Q&A. So um, if you see anything that you're like, oh, I want to know more about that, then just kind of put your comments there. And the same as uh, Pierre just said in Livestorm, you can do the same in the corner and we will answer them at the end. If you'd like to know more in general about Pluma or any of our software accelerators, uh, drop me a line um, in the comments um, and or send me a message and we can send you some uh, flyers and some spec sheets and marketing materials and everything will be anonymous, of course. So without further ado, I will hand you over to our lovely and capable speakers, Pierre and Julien. Thank you. Thank you, Georgie, for this uh, introduction. So let's uh, maybe uh, introduce ourselves. Um, so I'm uh, Pierre Gall, I'm Solution Director at Witekio and working at Witekio for now 15 years. Uh, playing a lot of different roles from uh, low level developers uh, to manager of a team and now building the IP uh, strategy for, uh, for WeTQ where we are currently building some, uh, some accelerators for our development and we will present to you one which is named Pluma today. Uh, with me today for uh, the technical part of uh, the automated testing, Julien. Julien, can I let you introduce yourself? Yes, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Julien Vieletambel. Uh, I'm the lead developer on Pluma. And Pluma is our in house built uh, automated IoT testing solution. Uh, later in this presentation, I, I'll give you a quick tour through uh, its current, current capabilities. That's why I'm here. Perfect. Thanks, Julien. And uh, let's go for the presentation. So we will start with a uh, a quick introduction about uh, about software and more particularly about the complexity of software. Uh, during my all my career, I, I see a lot of uh, different types of projects. And what is clear is that software is becoming more and more key in the development of uh, product, of embedded product, of connectivity solution, of IoT solution. Uh, so as software is more and more uh, complex, uh, testing it uh, become also more and more complex. We identify two types of projects today, what we call low feature software, maybe more concentrated on a microcontroller with less functionalities, and what we call also uh, feature rich software that integrate a screen with embedded, uh, embedded uh, UI, with connectivity, with an important um, uh, stake on security. And now we are just starting to see projects with uh, embedded AI. So uh, as you can see in this uh, global graphics, the complexity is more and more uh, important. Lately, we can introduce some uh, terminology before starting uh, the detail uh, of this webinar. Uh, the first one is about IoT. So what does uh, IoT really mean? Uh, I, I will just do a quick introduction for our today webinar. We can spend days just talking about that. But IoT for today means an equipment. That could be a low-end MCU-based device, or it could be a MPU high-end uh, device, which is connected uh, to a central IoT solution. We call that IoT Hub, with one or multiple business application uh, that uh, on allow uh, customers, users uh, to um, answer to a business need with this equipment. Uh, uh, on top of this IoT and local services, in some and in a lot of different use cases, uh, we can see that this uh, IoT services is connected to the internal tools, to the internal IT and OT ecosystem uh, of the company. Uh, I mean, for example, the customer base, uh, the customer database could be directly extracted from the CRM. So as you can see here, IoT means a lot of layers. That means a lot of different softwares. So that means, once again, a complexity uh, for the testing. I'm talking about testing, and I think we need to uh, all align on uh, what really uh, testing means once again for today, because that's a long and complex topic. 
Uh, and I try to summarize uh, what testing means in uh, uh, the famous pyramid uh, of, uh, of tests. Um, we will build it step after step. So the first level, the basics level, is what we call unit testing. It's a fully automated solution uh, that is where the objective and the meaning of this test is to validate uh, a, a very specific part of the code source, a specific algorithm, a function, testing with different parameters, and validate that everything is working as expected. The second level is what we call component tests. Uh, we are here starting to test a more global features like a full driver on an embedded, in an embedded part or a, a complete service uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, an, on an IoT platform or business logic specific field uh, on, a, on a UI app uh, embedded or, or not embedded. On top of component testing, we talk about integration tests. Uh, integration tests mean how my system behaves when I start to uh, assemble multiple components. Uh, so you have some interesting uh, example like OTA update. Huh? I mean, uh, over the air update of your uh, embedded system. It uses uh, an embedded feature. It uses a cloud part to upload a firmware. It needs a connectivity to download the firmware. It needs uh, another connectivity to report a new value. So there is multiple layers uh, that are integrated into this uh, integration test. And on top of this pyramid, uh, there is a system test, which is a full uh, act, I use, act I, as a user testing uh, that will validate all the complete and different business uh, features of, um, of a solution. Embedded, cloud, or both of them full IoT solution. What is important here uh, is about manual testing on board, off board. So unit tests, we will don't talk about unit tests today. Uh, it's more something that you can do automatically, directly integrated into your continuous integration with very dedicated tool. We call that off board automated testing. So you, you do it automatically, but you don't do that uh, in situ in the real uh, integration environment. For the other layer, you have two different ways of doing the tests. You can do onboard automated testing, I mean testing stuff in an automated way, but on the real hardware, on the real cloud environment. And some of the tests can be done manually, for sure. We will see that manual test is something key in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a development of a solution, of a product, and uh, it remains uh, something uh, really important. So we differentiate both manual testing and onboard automated testing, and we will really concentrate today on the onboard automated testing. Another interesting information we'd like to share today is about the duration between uh, the development and the test. And if you are in the unit test, you discover the bug uh, during the, the, the night that follows the development. So fixing this bug is really quick and is really easy because you can uh, definitely, or you already have in mind uh, how you develop these features. For the system test that occurs uh, often at the end uh, of the of the product uh, development, or at least at the end of an iteration, it becomes a longer period between the time you develop and you you do the test. So for the development team, it could take more time to uh, to fix the issue. And I think one of the key uh, topic in automated testing solution is to be able to discover the feature earlier because you are implementing the automated testing as soon as possible. For sure, for the full system testing. You can do a miracle, but just think about uh, testing it as soon as possible, help to discover the bug earlier, so help to um, reduce the cost of bug fixing. Now we will test to talk about automated testing. So what automated testing um, uh, allow uh, us to do? Uh, all the normal behavior the testing, what you can do with a manual testing, uh, normal behavior testing, edge case management, you can, it, it can also help to ease the non-regression testing because you can do it manually, but you can do more or less uh, a big part of what can be done manually. I mean a big part, but not everything. You have to be careful with that. What is important with automated testing it, is that it brings new capabilities in terms of testing, uh, like uh, endurance testing, robustness, performance measurement. And this is really important. Uh, because a part of this test could not really be done manually, or it could be done, but uh, with a long time, it could cost a lot, and it could be um, not so easy to reproduce uh, 
each time you want to test it. So um, automated testing really bring an added value in this uh, in this part. And automated testing in IoT, in fact, as we said before, IoT finally just bring complexity in the, in the project. Uh, so automated testing will help uh, to uh, to fight against this complexity and. Um, you will be able to, to test embedded software, driver, operating system, connectivity, cloud platform, and all the different layers of a system. Let's try to see what does that mean from a cost point of view if we compare manual and automated testing. That's just a, a rules graphics. It's not an absolute uh, uh, values. Uh, in the uh, vertical axis, you have the cumulative cost uh, of the test, and on the horizontal axis, you have the the time of the project. And what is important to see is that at the very beginning, when you start uh, the development, you do some uh, small manual uh, steps in, uh, in, uh, in your project. So it costs less to do manual tests. And building all the automated tests, putting in place the testing, the automated strategy uh, tooling will take more time at the beginning uh, than, than manual testing. But very we, we are between mid and the end of the development. Uh, having an automated testing suite will uh, help you to, to reduce the global cost of testing because you will be able to run it uh, again and again uh, for a, a really low uh, cost. Now, we are developing a solution named Puma uh, that helps to put in place automated testing. So the question to, to, to answer is why do we have a, uh, implement such type of, uh, of tools because definitely we don't find any satisfying tool on the market. You can find very specialized tools. Uh, for example, you have tools for uh, low level uh, Linux specialized um, uh, test suite, but you can do only Linux testing. You have uh, tools for uh, API testing. You have tools for uh, protocol uh, specific protocol testing, but you have nothing that are able to integrate all the different layers and uh, allowing you to perform this global IoT testing. And that's why we, we start uh, working on these tools that at the beginning was an internal tools, something like five or four years ago. Um, and we want uh, different uh, major features. We want to be able to deploy the embedded software uh, directly from the test tools to be able to really integrate the, the test uh, in the continuous integration and become really CT means continuous testing approach. Then we, want, we would like to be able to run a large set of actions. Uh, we have pre-integrated actions. You can develop your own actions. Um, these actions are the, the real test actions that um, an operator can do when he, he is doing a testing manual. But we also would like to, as, to act as an orchestrator. For example, for testing API, you have a, a grid tool, which is a Postman. And uh, it really makes sense for us to integrate this uh, tools, which is the perfect tool uh, for doing uh, testing of an API directly into Pluma. So that you can enjoy the best of all the different tools uh, for uh, the different part of your project, but everything integrated into a unique tool. We would like also to integrate measurement or also what we call metrics to be able to say, okay, uh, how my boot time, uh, how many time my, my boot take, and I can measure that all along the development of my project to be sure that there is no uh, deriv de de deviation of this boot time uh, during, uh, during the development. You can measure the performance of an Ethernet driver to be sure that uh, it is at the expected level of performance. So support measurement, support metrics uh, was a, a key topic uh, in, the, in the product definition. And at the end, we would like to be uh, well integrated into uh, standard reporting system. So we will see in the demonstration that we support Excel, but we also support uh, uh, test management application uh, that uh, you can use in your test strategy. What does that mean regarding the costs? We just try to make the automated testing uh, as uh, quicker than if you try to build uh, on your side the, the, the automated testing suite. So we, we, we are building what we call accelerators. This is the name of the initiative I am leading at WeTQ. Accelerators is here to enhance your time to market and reduce uh, your cost for, for your project development. 
Before uh, letting Julien uh, give you more insight about the technical part of the automated testing, I would like to do um, a quick introduction about test strategy because we see too much of our customers not really organized, not really doing this uh, um, this first step of uh, of a product development, which is a test strategy. Now, we can spend hours talking again about test strategy, but I, I just would like to highlight five major topic that needs to be uh, integrated into the test strategy. Uh, the first one is about uh, the global test approach, the test level you want to implement. Uh, I would like to do unit tests, yes, what, uh, what, what level of coverage I want. Uh, I would like to do automated testing for the global UI. I would like to do non-regression uh, testing. You define the global test approach. You need to define the correct role and responsibilities of everybody in the project. And in the test, there is not only the lead test and the test team. Uh, integrator and developers are only are all are also part of this uh, global uh, test strategy and have a role to play into this uh, into this product quality uh, approach. Next topic is about the environment definition. Uh, do I need a simulator? Uh, where do we plan to run our test? Do, do we have evaluation board? Do we only use uh, final hardware. What's our environment for the test look like? We will talk about test reporting. Uh, I I was talking uh, about um, test management application, but there is also different type of KPI you would like to define, like code coverage, like uh, um, coverage of uh, of story or coverage of uh, of a specification you want to cover with automated with manual testing performance indicators you want to reach. Uh, so define the global uh, testing reporting and, uh, and the KPI you want to follow up is also something important in your test strategy. And at the end, you will have to define the correct tools uh, to use to achieve this test strategy. So do you need an automated testing tools? Uh, what kind of simulator do you want to use? Uh, yeah, all the tools you need for, uh, for um, achieving uh, this uh, product quality. Uh, is in fact something that is key in your uh, in your global test strategy. So now you know better how uh, you can uh, you can uh, define your uh, your test strategy. Let's finish with some example. Uh, refocus on um, automated testing before uh, Julien give us more detail. Uh, I try to reuse the same pyramid. Uh, so the first level is component testing. So what can we test automatically? in a component test uh, uh, layer. But let's take the example of a non-flash driver. I don't know if you are familiar with embedded system, but it is a, a type of a, of, a, of a flash, of a, a ROM storage. Um, you can um, imagine read and write cycle. You can imagine checking bad block. You can imagine random access. You can measure the performance in read, the performance in write, the global robustness of the driver. So there are a lot of different possibilities you can do uh, automatically in, at this uh, component level. Uh, another interesting um, driver to test is a Wi-Fi driver. For example, in Pluma, we integrate uh, the control of a router, so we are able to uh, set up uh, fully automatically uh, a complete infrastructure of tests for Wi-Fi. So we set up uh, first in a open authentication, then a web authentication, then a WPA authentication, WPA2, and we do that for all the channel and sub-channel. And for all these different modes, we are able to measure the performance, the global endurance, and have a global report. So our Wi-Fi tests take hours, uh, but at the end, uh, you have a, a, a global overview of the capabilities of your uh, Wi-Fi driver and also the global performance of this Wi-Fi driver. If we move to a second level, uh, integration testing, um, I told just a few minutes ago about boot uh, boot testing. So there is a boot robustness testing, which is really important. If I try to boot my product about uh, 100 times, what's happened? Uh, just for a, few st a small story, we do that on an IMX site, uh, NXP BSP, a few months ago. And we discover that once every 800 boot, uh, the, G the, the GPU driver does not boot correctly the system. So there is really an added value of um, doing such type of um, reboot and endurance testing. Um, the other example I take is about firmware update. Uh, firmware update is a complex operation that takes time to be done 
uh, manually. Here, with an, a, a good tools, you can upload a firmware in your cloud, ask your embedded device to, uh, uh, to update it, then check on the embedded part if the device has been updated correctly, then check on the cloud that the device reports correctly its current firmware version. So this is a, the, the type of test you can do easily in an automated way. And at the end, there is a system testing. So here is more the uh, manual uh, world, but you can do a lot of different, uh, uh, for example, UI testing. Uh, we have a, a feature included in Pluma to click on a cute button. So I click on button uh, one and check if the text box is have the correct value or stuff like that. Um, that could be uh, also an added value. And all of these uh, three types of uh, uh, testing are really the pillar of uh, a global product quality. So for the question is uh, automated testing uh, a game changer for the product quality? I don't would like to spoil the uh, final slide, but yeah, it definitely helps to, uh, to increase the quality of a product. Now I do a global presentation about strategy, test, automatization, and IoT. I will uh, let Julien uh, give you some uh, example of uh, test in automated way uh, with the, some example based on Pluma. Julien? Yes, let's go. All right, so uh, more details on Pluma. So what's Pluma? It's a, it comes as a command line interface tool. So uh, it can be run on a Linux environment machine. Um, please, Pierre, just pass the slide. All right. So as inputs, it will take uh, YAML uh, configuration files uh, that are quite high level. Uh, it will take a test plan that, that would define each and every action you want uh, to test your device with. And then uh, it would also take uh, a target definition. So that's where you would find uh, all the connectivity information you need to address your device. So from there, Prima will, will execute and produce you and provide you with multiple uh, results, logs. Uh, the first and main one would be the JSON results. Uh, it will list um, uh, status for each of your tests. It will list uh, some, some, some stuff like duration of your test, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, may, maybe persisted data. Uh, aside from that, you would get raw logs. So those would be uh, what happened on your, uh, on your shell on the host, uh, what happened on the uh, uh, device shell if you opened any, um, and also more straightforward, more exploitable uh, outputs that you could uh, open right away would be uh, the Excel reports. So from just a glance, you could see if, if everything is going well. And also you could even integrate uh, with reporting tools like X-Ray. So, from now, I, I, I get you through uh, the main means of interaction we got uh, with Pluma to, to test the device. So I start with the most uh, straightforward ones, the core interactions that we call call interactions, the more direct one. So uh, let's say I've got a, a device, a DUT, a device under test uh, uh, that I want to test uh, that supports that supports sorry a shell. So first, uh, I'll open a console to it. Uh, I'm going to start writing uh, commands to it, read uh, the, outputs, the outputs, and expect uh, specific values. Uh, aside from that, I can use specific entry points. That's a more uh, 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 indirect uh, means of testing my device, but I, I could um, test the device envi environment uh, so I could manage uh, the power of the device. Let's say my device is powered by a, a power distribution unit. So um, I, I could turn on and off my device from there, from Pluma. I could uh, emulate some storage space on the device. I could even flash firmware uh, if, I've, if I've got a, a JTAG uh, between my host and my uh, DFT. Uh, I'm going to give you just a quick example. So I've got a host, a device, and a power distribution unit. Everyone is interconnected uh, through the local network, and the power distribution unit is powering my device. Here in this example, my device is a MX8. Uh, it's expected to run some Linux Yocto based image, uh, and I want to assert that the kernel version uh, is 5.10 point something. 
Uh, I know it's up on dot one dot xx on the local network. I also got details about my power distribution unit. So it's uh, an IP power 9258. Uh, it powers the device uh, through its first outlet. And I know it's up on dot one dot yy. Uh, so what I need uh, on the host side, Prima would need a testing plan and a target definition. So how does that look? Uh, uh, the test plan uh, is really simple here. Uh, it's a simple test named assert kernel version. Uh, you can see three main blocks in that test, a setup, a sequence, and a teardown. So first, uh, to be able to test my device, I, I want it to be uh, powered on. So I send, uh, I send a power on command to the uh, PDU, and I wait for five seconds. So I'm sure that the device is up. After that, I'm going to run some actions. Uh, so first is uh, a run on device action. Uh, uh, what I'm doing is just I'm going to run on the device a uname-srm command, and I'm going to run another action, with, which is a check. I'm going to check that the uh, uh, command output contains 5.8. It's really naive here. Uh, after, that, after that, I'm pouring off the device again. Uh, the target definition here, it, it needs to contain all the connectivity information uh, on both my device and my PDU. So to interact with my device, I'm opening a, a secure shell uh, to my device. Uh, so the target is .1.xx. I'm giving uh, the target credentials as well. I'm doing the same thing uh, for the power distribution unit. So here uh, I'm stating that power man management will be done through the PDU daemon tool. Uh, I'm specifying where to address the PDU uh, the, uh, the outlet to, to, to use to power my device. And I need to provide the driver and the credentials of my PDU. Okay, so that's it for for first example, uh, just testing uh, the kernel version of uh, uh, a remote device. Another mean of communication we have uh, to test uh, a device would be uh, the protocol communication tests. Uh, here Prima does not interact with the device as such Instead, it interacts with the host uh, interfaces that are somehow connected to the DUT interfaces. So here we expect, uh, uh, depending on the protocol, a specific connection. It could be a serial connection, an Ethernet connection, a Bluetooth connection, anything. Uh, uh, today, I'm going to show you an example with the uh, BLE uh, protocol testing. So the Bluetooth low energy protocol uh, tests cap capabilities that we have. So in this particular uh, protocol, what Prima does is it, it, that it interacts with the blue stack on the host, uh, and it's going to test the behavior of a device acting as a Bluetooth server, as a GAT server. So what our example will do, it's, it, it will like flash a new firmware to the device uh, through, our, through our open OCD uh, wrapped actions. Uh, through a JTAG that needs, uh, in this case, to be OpenOCD compliant. And then I, I expect my device uh, to be up uh, in Bluetooth to advertise, uh, to, adver to advertise a specific name. Uh, it should be named BLE device, uh, and it should uh, expose a given characteristic uh, from the value, sorry, the value needs to be hello world. All right. so. Here, the test plan is going to be a bit more complex. Uh, we are going to do more stuff than before. So I'm defining a name for the test, uh, which states itself. Um, and I'm defining multiple variables. So I don't have each time I want to uh, specify the device ID to uh, uh, write it as such. So my device ID, I said it was expected to be named DLE underscore device. I'm specifying a specific uh, characteristic uh, and also its values, uh, its value, sorry. So here's this byte array uh, translate to hello world. So that's the value I want to assert in the specific characteristic. Uh, and then I start my plan. So the setup would be flashing uh, the new firmware to the device. So I start an open OCD session. I, I, I write uh, a specific file uh, I flash a specific file 
through the JTAG. So here I expect uh, my, my, my firmware file to be uh, in the current directory, in the execution current di directory, and to be named the alien underscore device underscore firmware.bin. Uh, I'm ending the OCD session, and I can start uh, my, my test sequence per se. So I'm going to uh, scan uh, for available device around my, uh, my host, and I'm going to check that BLE device is up. All right. From there, I'm going to try to connect to this device, and I'm going to uh, read the value of the given characteristic uh, that I specified earlier. Here, I expect it to be hello world again. Uh, uh, the target definition here, you can see it doesn't define any connectivity information because uh, it only needs to define uh, which specific Pluma, uh, which specific resources Pluma needs to use uh, uh, in this plan uh, to be able to use specific actions. So I want to flash uh, using uh, OpenOCD. So I need to specify that with OpenOCD underscore local. And also I need to specify that I want to use uh, the wrapping of the blue stack. So I'm specifying the BLE uh, resource here. All right, that's it for the example on protocol communication. And now moving to the last uh, interaction mean I want to, uh, to present will be the, the cloud platform interaction. So uh, the host uh, on Prima will, will send HTTP requests, uh, would be able to run Postman collection on a given platform interface, uh, cloud API something, uh, that he that uh, would interact with one or multiple devices there. For the example, uh, how does that look? We've got a host, which is a Raspberry Pi. We've got the DUT on the other side, which is uh, an ESP32. Uh, and what I'm going to test is that the platform is able through MQTT to uh, turn the LED, a LED uh, that is connected through the, to the DUT JBIOs on and off. Uh, to assert that the LED is on and off, uh, my host will also be connected to the same LED. Uh, so let's go uh, through let, the let, Maybe ju just a few words on this example yeah. because it is really a, a very interesting example of uh, IoT full stack integration. Uh, here you can see that we are able to interact with uh, 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 an IoT uh, solution, central cloud platform. Uh, we are able to interact with the hardware locally, and uh, it is a very basic uh, use case. We just check a LED, but you can imagine very uh, more complex uh, test case with, uh, as I said before, a TA update or checking uh, some uh, some sensors value, checking frequency of message received by a cloud platform, and so on and so on. So that's really uh, the, the, a strong added value of these global IoT tools to be able to, to do this entire solution. Uh, I, I also just take a minute to talk about this uh, platform interface we are talking here, which is KMEA, which is uh, one of the other accelerators we are doing in the Accelerator Initiative, which is an IoT uh, data integration and device management solution uh, we are doing in the same way of accelerators for our customers. But that's another story, and we will probably have a, a webinar in the coming weeks on this topic. Yeah. All right, so we can yeah, move to the uh, test plan and, and target definition. So I, uh, here we are starting with the target definition explanation. So I said we need to be able to uh, uh, interface with the host GPIOs. So here we can see that uh, I, I say, I'm say i saying that I can control the LED state through the pin 21. Uh, from there, uh, in my plan, I would be able to test uh, the, um, the LED state. So on the uh, on my test, first thing I'm doing is uh, asserting that the uh, LED is off. Uh, I'm turning the LED off so I can run my test. And uh, once I'm sure the LED is off, I'm sending a first request to the platform. Uh, here there is a number of parameters, uh, namely the, the the URL to 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 eat uh, the action. And uh, you can see in the post data that uh, I expect the LED state. Uh, to be one. So once the request is uh, sent, I'm waiting for five seconds. So I'm sure that the platform uh, will be able to process the request and the device will turn the uh, uh, LED on. To assert that the LED is on, I'm doing uh, uh, 
a read, a read from uh, my host, JPIOs, and I expect the LED to be uh, active, to be up. Uh, again, I'm sending a new request, and this time I want the, the LED state to be zero. I want the LED to, to power down. Uh, after I send my request, I, I wait for five seconds, same thing. I'm waiting for the platform to be able to process the request. Uh, and then I'm reading the JPIO value again. So here I expect it to be uh, put down. All right, so that's about it for the examples uh, and the current capabilities of Prima I, would like, uh, I, I wanted to highlight. Uh, moving to the, uh, to the logs now. Earlier, I, I told you that Prima uh, outputs contain multiple logs. So we're gonna start with the raw logs uh, here is the first log you, you're gonna get after each execution of Prima. It's the host console log, so it's what's uh, directly the output of Prima. So in your console, it would look like that, and you're gonna get a log file corresponding to that. Uh, here, the value is just uh, to keep a tra trace of what happened, so you can uh, see the multiple actions that, that were run, and either uh, the action passed, the test corresponding to the action passed, and the old plan passed or not. Uh, aside from that, you're going to get, if you open a console to the, to the device, you're going to get uh, a corresponding log. So here in the first test I, I've done, which, were, which was the assert kernel version, uh, I opened a, a secure shell to my device. And you can see that on the device, uh, a uname-srm uh, command was run. Uh, and you can see its output. Uh, all right, so that's it for the raw logs. Uh, moving to the more exploitable logs, the JSON results. Uh, it's a file that will contain every details about the execution. Uh, and you can see it's it's made up of three main blocks. The data block, uh, which is the persisted data uh, by each and individual action. So an action can persist data uh, to this file if it needs to. Uh, under that, you can see a, a settings, a block, which will be more uh, a description of the plan we, we run. So I didn't name my plan earlier, so uh, it, it falls back to default plan. Uh, I ran a single test. It was named assert kernel version and two actions were run. Uh, so uh, the run on device action and its parameters. So it's just the uname-srm command and the check action, uh, which by default uh, checks that the expression we saw was true. Okay, the main block is the results block. It will uh, give you inf information on either uh, the, the execution is a success or not. Uh, is your plan a success or not? The start time of the execution, the end time. And for each test, it's going to give you the same information uh, like uh, start time, uh, duration, uh, does it pass or failed? Uh, it, would, it would really expose a number of information. Here, everything is folded down so I can uh, get you through it, uh, but it would it would need many and many slides uh, to go over the, the entire uh, JSON result file. All right. Uh, also, you get, if you ask for it, an Excel report. So here it's also the same uh, test, very simple test. There is a single test uh, run to the device. So you can see the number of success uh, tests, the skip test, because uh, on very big plan, you can mark uh, tests as to be skipped, uh, the number of failed tests, and also start time, duration, etc. You can see uh, under that that there is two tabs uh, in this Excel file, uh, a test result and a test matrix. So if your test uh, generated any matrix, here it, my assert kernel version does not. But imagine that Prima uh, is, is uh, plugging in a, a CAN bus from a device, uh, this device has multiple nodes communi communicating through this bus, uh, and Prima uh, captured what happened on a single CAN ID. It would generate uh, a metric, uh, like the reception time interval, so how many time passed between two messages received from the CAN ID, and I want it to be, uh, let's say I want it to be every uh, 100 milliseconds, so here I can see the, the mean value uh, I read, I read uh, the, the max value, 
uh, and the standard deviation. So uh, even uh, if the mean value was correct, here from a glance, you could say that the, the, the something is happening, uh, something wrong is happening because uh, you don't you you get a, a standard deviation that is too big uh, and that doesn't uh, fit your expectations. All right. Uh, just last, I earlier said you could integrate with uh, reporting tools like X-ray. Uh, so here, how does that look? Uh, for for plan uh, in X-ray, you will find uh, for the like the logs produced, any Prima uh, output would be sent as attachments to to X-ray, and you could see the overall execution, so how many tests passed, how many failed, etc. Uh, all right, that's it for me. Thank you for listening to me. Uh, I, yeah, we're going to get back to Pierre for, for, for the next slide. Thanks, Thanks Julien, for, uh, for this, uh, this detailed presentation. So, yeah, we have a lot of features that we could not uh, demonstrate on Pluma. Uh, we have the core, the core Pluma that are able to control UI, uh, doing some uh, concurrency testing, measuring metrics, uh, helping you to, to measure some... Uh, of so, so some stuff. We have uh, two extensions, one dedicated for Linux uh, with the Wi-Fi test suite, for example, and one dedicated for a protocol test suite. So yeah, if you need more information, don't hesitate to contact us. We will be happy to uh, to make a more, some more specific demonstration for, uh, for you or for your team. Uh, we are now at the uh, conclusion. So the key takeaway for this, uh, this uh, webinar, so is uh, automated testing a, a game changer for uh, product quality? Uh, yeah, for sure. The response is, is yes. Uh, it allows not uh, not human doable testing type like performance testing, endurance testing. We are able to do uh, reproducibility very very well. Um, it will empower the development team in the product quality because you will be able to give uh, the, the development team a tools to prepare some uh, uh, ready to go uh, uh, tests for the QA team. So you can embed more uh, all the different tools of your project. It will help to. Uh, Early uh, early bug detection, so that means cost reduction of the global uh, global development. Uh, it will also integrate the test more in your day to day. Uh, with, for example, a, a nightly automated testing that will give every morning some KPI on the quality of the project. But uh, because there is always a but, uh, it is not replacing human. You need to keep uh, uh, your QA team that 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 people are key for the product global product quality tooling is just tooling uh, so it's how you use it that will make the quality of your testing um, so important to correctly use it and to correctly know what you want to test and correctly define your test strategy uh, we were talking about before um, it, it, it will never replace uh, some type of manual testing like for example the what we call exploratory testing where a QA guy are just doing uh, using the application as a standard user uh, doing random stuff and uh, this will be always necessary uh, to, to, to deliver a, a, a global project. And just a, a final word, QA are just a little genius. So they are able to find the right small detail on, uh, on the projects that are not uh, uh, doing as expected. So, so please concentrate your testing strategy, not on testing or on tools, but on having the right guy in the, in the QA team. So think testing at the very beginning of the project, correctly build the test strategy, prepare full test plan, non-regression testing, and correctly structure this test strategy, and you will be able uh, to, uh, to enhance your, uh, your global project quality. That's it for, uh, for us today. Uh, thanks a lot for uh, listening, for joining us. You have our contact, uh, telephone, mail, and LinkedIn, if you want uh, to, to join us. Uh, we will be really happy to, to discuss uh, a little bit more about what we can do and how Puma can help and what we take you can do for you in terms of product development and quality. Here is a link uh, to our all uh, software accelerator web page. If you have any question, please uh, use the integrated LabStorm uh, question uh, system and uh, we will be happy to answer. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Pierre, and thank you, Julian. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, rounding up, but um, we're not rounding up. We're here for your questions. If anyone has some, I've got a couple that have been um, asked before because I sent emails to everyone saying 
do you have any questions? Let me know. But I particularly like that you uh, you could QA evil geniuses. I always recommend <laughs> hiring any kind of evil genius is good to me. So that's all. That's always good. That's the takeaway. Hire an evil genius and then buy Pluma. Um, so uh, some of the questions that we've had um, asked, as I said before, and guys, please um, ask questions if you've got any um, in the chat and I will answer them. Um, so the first one is, if Pluma doesn't support the feature that you want to test, how can you manage that? Um, yeah, good question. Uh, in fact, Pluma is uh, written in Python and uh, everything has been designed uh, to create extension. So what we, what Julien demonstrate with action, like run on host, run on device, checks, uh, you can write your own uh, in Python. Uh, the, the, the entire source code of Pluma is available. Uh, so we, uh, when we, we deliver Pluma to our customer, in fact, we are delivering a, a source code. So there is no vendor locking. This is also the software accelerator strategy. So you will be able to extend very, very easily uh, with your own test case right on in Python. Uh, your to to fit your your exact needs in terms of testing. Okay, that makes sense. So it's not the end of the world if if you don't have the exact one, you can add it. Okay, and then the next question is: uh, Can you give us some real use cases you using Plume in the industry? So obviously it's been launched, and um, how is it being used currently? Yeah, sure, sure. I, I, I can't name the the. Customer name. I can't use the customer name, but we we are working in a lot of different uh, industry. We are using for uh, uh, home appliance uh, solution, uh, a coffee machine. We are uh, uh, working in the pure industry with uh, industrial sensors uh, like level sensors uh, for industrial uh, industrial process. Uh, we are working for uh, workout equipment. Nani. We are working for small startup and big group. So there is definitely no standard uh, type of project uh, because uh, because testing and software quality is key for everybody from uh, from the, the small uh, SME to uh, to the major uh, the major multinationals that are doing a big product okay and then uh, the final question that I've got here it talks about when automated testing is most important so you know uh, you talked earlier about the different levels of testing so when is it most important that you you need it um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I try to share to share that in the slide. We, in fact, I, as I try to say, the idea is to concentrate your effort on automated testing for the component and the integration testing. I think the component is maybe the more easy uh, stuff to to set up because you take a driver, you know the input, the output. Uh, you can create measurement stuff, and you can uh, really concentrate your effort on having this specific component, this specific driver or feature tested. Uh, it becomes really powerful when you are doing uh, uh, integration testing. As we see in the demonstration with the LED, the GPIO, and the platform, you, we are able to validate a global scenario, uh, a global scenario of uh, connectivity. Uh, so it's really, really, really uh, easy to do and uh, and uh, with a lot of added value. It becomes more complex for the global system testing, even if you can do some uh, some UI interaction, for example, with uh, with Puma. Perfect. Um, I think that is it currently for any questions. This is the last call if anybody else has any. I'm just going to double check. But thank you so much, Pian. Thank you, Julian. You've been fabulous. And uh, yeah, and I hope everybody out there has learned a bit more about our software accelerators and in particular, automated IoT testing with Pluma. Uh, I will speak to you all later. Bye. Thanks all. Thank you, Jordi. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.